So the Barbie movie is out today. I've been following Margot Robbie's incredible looks for the press tour. Skia Pirelli, who I've been stanning, created this custom look for her that was actually based on a collectible Barbie look. So I have the idea of creating something kind of like an Elsa Skia Pirelli Barbie Oreo sandwich situation. We're gonna start off with a classic base upon which we will be interpreting the original 1959 Barbie fit. For our interpretation of the swimsuit, I want it to reference Skia Pirelli's shocking perfume silhouette, which was based on the curves of actress Mae West. Let's get started. I made my best attempt to draft a pattern. Not gonna show you the process because my process is not pretty. For fabric, I have this gorgeous black and white crepe de chine. So you can buy zebra print fabric or rip up your own zebra stripes. Attach strips of alternating colors, sew them together. What's black and white and black and white and black and white and black and white? Our homemade zebra fabric made out of crepe de chine. I'm actually gonna take a leaf out of American artist Ellsworth Kelly's book. So his 1951 masterpiece, Cite, was brush strokes that he cut up into 20 squares and then arranged by chance. This kind of by chance factor was his way of saying sometimes creation involves this kind of happen chance collaboration with the unexpected. Let's pin our previously mentioned pattern onto our homemade Ellsworth Kelly. Cut around the pattern, leaving half an inch seam allowance. I might have eyeballed it. Don't do as I do. And mark the seam allowance using thread. These will help us to work within the lines. And even if one has the tiniest amount of boobage, we still need bust starts. Now it's time for, you know it, embroidery. So like an embroiderer's buffet, I've already selected our black and white embellishments for this project. For the embroidery, I'm actually basing it on this Chanel métier d'art that was done by Maison Le Sage. Skia Pirelli and Coco Chanel were notoriously not friends, but Maison Le Sage, he did beautiful embroidery work for both designers. Elsa, will you please forgive me? I'm catching enough beads and sequins to fill a line and then making a U-turn at the end of the aisle and starting on the next queue of embellishments. This looks tedious, and it is, but it is also massively relaxing. You can see I'm integrating more 3D sequins into the design. I really love it when embroidery kind of extends outward. It just looks like there's more life to it, kind of like a coral reef. I'm not a trained embroiderer. I never went to fashion school. Everything I do that you see on this channel, it's 50% self-taught, and the other 50% is based on what looks good to me. Let's sew down the bust starts and then keep embroidering over them so that the edges look purposeful. Since we don't want our bodice flopping around like the Whomping Willow, we're gonna cut out some horsehair canvas and attempt to pad stitch it to the back of our shell. I hadn't factored in that I wouldn't be able to tell if I needed to use black thread or white thread from the back, which made my pad stitching super not confident. It was just like timid pad stitching. If there are any professionals who know their tailoring watching this, I apologize profusely. We're also gonna be using some shoulder pads around the hip area to create that exaggerated curve. And an attempt to imitate that Mae West silhouette or Kim Kardashian West, depending on which West you're more akin to. So time for a quick fitting. I marked out where the Velcro should close up on the back and then also changed into the black bendo dress so that I could mark out where it ends under the bodice. Let's attach our lining, which I prepared off camera, to our shell right sides facing. Pin all around, sew all around, and declutter any loose threads or excess fabric. And now we flip. Now we can safely remove any visible basting stitches and press it all nice and crisply flat. Mind the gap and pin it shut. Then top stitch all around using black thread on only the black areas. This will create a nice little invisible effect. Close up the boning channel, cut the boning down to the ideal length, and then close up the other end. 
I'm gonna attach Velcro to only the black striped areas because it'll just camouflage into the zebra stripes. I mean, close up, you will be able to tell that there's Velcro, but from afar. Now we've, okay, now we've arrived at the surprise. So I wanna make a donut floaty out of fabric inspired by Margot Robbie's Vogue US shoot by Ethan James Green. Since we're using the white crepe de chine as our donut dough, we're gonna cut using pinking shears since it frays a lot. Only stitch the inside curve of the donut for now. And for our polka dots, I'm gonna be drawing circles on the black crepe de chine leftovers and then embroidering chaotic clusters of black embellishment within each. Kind of like a little dumpling filling. Cut each of them out and attach to our donut base. Polka dots were originally used to reference the clothing worn by those dancing the polka dance in the 1880s. In the 1920s, they became associated with the flapper style. And in the 1940s, Marilyn Monroe made them iconic. And by the 60s, they became more graphic and abstract, often in black and white, epitomized by designers like Yves Saint Laurent. Now attach the donuts right sides facing, stitch all around, and flip. I know this looks like a sad sock right now, bear with me. Pressing makes everything look better. We're gonna be sacrificing an innocent pillow for the creation of this floaty. For the perfect donut, don't use like a full circle, just take out a sizable bite, and that way when it fills up, it'll kind of just be more perfect. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll be like a wonky donut. Once it's reasonably stuffed, sew together parts of the end, finish stuffing, and then close up the end completely. Now we can add the rest of our polka dots. After I completed it, I squealed with joy and took about five million selfies with it. And finally, we're done. You can wear this trompe l'oeil swimsuit in two ways. One, thread the halter strings through these two straps I added onto the bandeau dress so that it keeps the whole dress up. And two, you can just wear it as is, bare-backed and all, since this is meant to look like a swimsuit. And the donut just brings me so much joy. I feel like it completes the outfit. It can also be worn with a simple black dress for a more casual outing. I added straps to it so that it can float. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this first of quite a few Schiaparelli meets Barbie videos that I I have planned. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!